Okay, that's close to a minute. Uh, okay, so we'll get started with the uh, candidates for Board of Selectmen. Three candidates for one seat. Desiree Asselbeek, you, William Boland, and Brian Shea. And we did the same flip of the coin. And uh, the first one is uh, Desiree Asselbeek, you. Desiree. Thank you to the Board of Library Trustees for hosting this evening's event and welcome citizens in the audience and for those who will be viewing later at home. My name is Desiree Asselbeekian and I'm running for the Board of Selectmen to bring a new vision to our town. I am a fourth generation resident of Woodland Road where my grandparents, mother, and several cousins all live. I've loved growing up in South Row and plan on staying here for many more years. Due to my family's multi-generational background, I have established relationships with groups in our community, young and old. My goal is to promote proper services to benefit all. Our town is facing many challenges and we need leaders who are honest, unafraid, and dedicated to making good, solid decisions. Our town government cannot continue to conduct its business behind closed doors. I want to bring an unprecedented amount of transparency and accountability to the townhouse. We live in an age where constant access to information is the standard and our local government should be no different. That's why an upgrade of our technology infrastructure is so important. Residents and members of the business community should be able to conduct all their town business online if they choose. Also, public records should be readily available through the town's website. Unfortunately, our town lacks vision. We have no plan. We cannot continue to be reactionary to issues and instead we must be proactive. Creating a new strategic vision for our community's operational and capital needs is vital for our future. Every department should have a long-term vision with a 10-year forecast. Some departments, including the library, are beginning this process. I hope to assist in facilitating communication among departments and residents so we can achieve this vision together as one community. Please visit my campaign website at electdesiree.com. I'm looking forward to your questions and earning your vote on Monday, May 11th. Thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Boland. Uh, good evening, I'm Bill Boland. Thank you to the library trustees. Um, I'm honored to have served you in the town as a selectman for the past nine years. I'm a fourth generation resident. My wife, Caitlin, and I have three children who are all at Algonquin Regional High School or have graduated from there. Uh, in my nine years, I believe I have a strong record of voting on the issues that were in the best interest of the town. We have worked hard to continue to provide excellent services that our residents expect while keeping our tax increases to a minimum. Some of our accomplishments, we hired a new town administrator, Mark Purple, who is doing an excellent job and work toward giving him more authority in day-to-day -day operations. The way that we currently operate is far more efficient and allows the administrator and the board to accomplish more than the previous model. <coughs> Excuse me, I have some allergies. We hired a new police chief, building commissioner, and facilities manager who are all doing a great job making improvements in their departments. We started a new streamlined budget process with the goals of better efficiency and providing more information to the residents in advance of town meeting. By working with our employees to reduce health insurance and benefit costs, we have lowered our costs and saved significantly on our future payments to retiree benefits. We established an OPEP um, trust fund and began making annual contributions to it to set aside funds to pay for our costs related to retiree benefits. While some towns are facing overrides right now, it's important to notice that we are $2 million below our levy capacity in our budgets. We are actively working with our Economic Development Committee on attracting new businesses to town as well as retaining those current businesses to keep our commercial tax rates, rates higher. We're implementing a new town website as we speak that will be more user-friendly and provide better communication and easier access and information to our residents. We were successful in obtaining funding through the Mass Tip program of the DOT for reconstruction of our main street. The project will begin in the fiscal year, which begins in the fall of 2016, 
and will save the taxpayers over six million dollars. In the coming years, we need to continue to, to control our budget and prioritize attention to the town's capital plan, especially facilities for public safety, recreation, oh, excuse me, seniors, and transfer and recycle center. For me, listening to the opinions of our residents is most important. I'm encouraged that so many people, they to tell me they watch our meetings on television. I always try to make time to speak with our residents, as many would rather share their opinions in person rather than in writing or email. Unfortunately, the hardest part about listening to people's opinions is sometimes having to let them know that you think there might be a better option for the town and that you're gonna vote that way. Thank you all, I would ask for your support and vote to re-elect me on Monday, May 11th. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mr. Shea. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. And thanks to the uh, library trustees for hosting this event. Thank you all for coming as well. Uh, and thanks to everybody who's watching on TV and will watch on, on later broadcasts. Well, my name is Brian Shea, and unlike my other two opponents, I've not lived in Southboro my whole life. Um, so this coming December will mark the 20th year since my wife Ann and I moved to town. Uh, we were living in Hyde Park just after we got married, and as our second child was on the way, we knew that we wanted to leave the city and move to the suburbs. I grew up in Shrewsbury, my, my wife grew up in Franklin, so we wanted, knew that we wanted to come back somewhere in this area and focused on Southboro. Um, so while I'm not a lifer in town, I do consider myself a rest of my lifer in town. I have no plans to leave here. Um, we've been embraced by many people in the town, uh, people that we've come to know through church, through soccer fields, through schools. Uh, we've been very welcome and enjoy being here, and we enjoy giving back to the community as well. From right after we started, uh, at, right after we had moved here, my wife and I became involved at St. Anne Church with CE programs. Um, we believe and are committed to a strong sense of participation in the community. Uh, I've coached at the South Bar Youth Soccer for 10 years, and then I look to take that spirit of participation to town committees as well. I've served on four committees uh, in town. Currently, I'm chair of the advisory committee. And no, two years ago, the town took a very strong step to expand the Board of Selectmen from three members to five. And it was a, a bold move at the time and one that I questioned as I attended the meetings that those committees were having. But I was convinced that the town needs to have the perspective of more individuals in town than just the board of three. And having a perspective and being able to draw upon the talents that exist in this town beyond just the group of three is well needed. I look forward to a great night tonight and your questions and appreciate your support on May 11th. Okay, thank you very much. So now we go to the question and answer period. If anyone has a question, please feel free to come forward and use this microphone. Stand over here on my right and ask your question. And if there's a lot of hesitancy, I'll ask a question, but... <clears throat> okay, while well, you're thinking about... Okay, good, while well, you're thinking about your question. I have a question. <clears throat> to each one of you, if, uh, if funds were not a uh, problem, what would be your top priority for capital expenditure in this town? Top priority, to do something to improve the town that the town probably needs. Who wants to go first? Okay, Mr. Shepard. So again, with, again, with the caveat that the funding is not an option. Mm -hmm. The first project that I would undertake is a, an approved public, fa public safety facility. The first committee that I was on in town looked at uh, expanding and improving the <coughs> services available to both the fire and the police departments. Uh, I think the fact that we have our police department trying to operate in a modern day society the way that police departments do now and have those activities forced inside 
the four walls of a brick and block building that dates back to the Hoover administration, I don't think is right. Um, with, on the committee that I looked at, we had come up with a concept layout for a police station. I learned very quickly through that process that you need to focus on the specialized activities that exist within that department. You need to recognize that there are sally ports where prisoners are brought in. There are lines of sights that you need to maintain in the building. The separation you need to make with prisoners, witnesses, and families of each of those. And we just can't do that effectively in the building that we have. I know that there's a committee that is currently looking at another option uh, behind the transfer station, and I would welcome the opportunity to work with that committee and advance that. But I think that's the first capital priority that I would look to undertake. Next, Desiree. Well, I agree with um, Mr. Shea that the public safety complex is something that certainly should be a priority. I'm, and and I, I don't disagree with anything he said. I, however, would take a little bit of a different approach to this and recognize that we have a lot of um, different operations in different buildings. And I think putting together one central building, a community building, that may encompass a number of different groups um, whether that's seniors, whether it's a library, um, whether it's our, a, a community space for meeting rooms. Um, currently, we have one hearing room in this town that the Board of Selectmen go to every Tuesday night um, up top. We do utilize the Corderville, um, you know, Senior Center for several meetings. But there is no centralized meeting place, a community center that all different groups, multi-generational groups, could have access to and benefit from. And again, moving forward to develop a vision for our future in our town, we need to have to look at not segmented areas. Some people may be for improving um, a new library, new public safety, new senior facility, new this, new that. Instead of being segmented, we need to start taking a more communal approach to how we want to address our capital needs in the future. And I look forward to working with um, the new standing committee. Um, there's going to be, hopefully in the future, a building standing committee um, in, in developing more communal places that we can all benefit from. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul. Um, I, I think everyone's correct that you know having having been through this once looking at the public safety facility um, that is the of utmost important to cur currently the people on the board of selectmen and, and to me um, it's an easy question when you say um, money's not an issue because what it comes down to is money is an issue and public construction costs about four hundred dollars a square foot which is about three times what it costs to to build commercial buildings so that's what makes things very difficult to do it but um, there's, there's a lot of other things we, we've had plans Brian did a great job on the first committee he he was on that might have been your first experience in government and he, and he stuck with it after that so that's good. <laughs> but, uh, uh, we, we're, we're trying to do that again we're looking at all our buildings and we have a, a, a good internal capital budget planning committee now that'll be stable and has already been looking at um, things we, we have good long-term capital plans for our equipment but that doesn't include everything like roofs and other things so so we're, we're doing a good job with that, but public safety. Okay, Mr. Giolandino, do you still have the same question? This is a uh, question directed to all three candidates. Under the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, citizens have the right to challenge the actions of government officials. And that right includes citizens asking for copies of public records. And it's unconstitutional and a violation of the First Amendment to charge exorbitant fees for getting copies of public records. In light of what transpired with how the Open Space Preservation Commission was treated, and basically if I understand the scenario as Mr. Haggerty explained, the Open Space Preservation Commission um, basically made a public records request and the Board of Selectmen uh, wanted to charge the Commission $750. And when the Commission wanted to 
you, you're shaking your head, Mr. Boland, but I've heard otherwise. Um, when the commission uh, wanted to use its budget, the Board of Selectmen said no. So the commission went to the advisory committee to get authorization. They went to town meeting, and uh, when it was on uh, for a town meeting vote, uh, the board made a motion, I believe, to uh, cut the budget. And that didn't happen. Basically, the commission made that request for the public records in September of 2014. Here we are, more than six months later, and they still haven't gotten the information. So how do you respond that you have, A, violated the public records law by the way you respond, or this, uh, how do you respond to the, to the argument that the Board of Selectmen has violated the, open, the op, uh, violated public records law and even impinged on the constitutional rights of the commission members. So are you asking all of them? Or is this just for the current board member? Mr. Bowen. Well, um, I, I can under, uh, understand some from frustration from people, but um, we, we did not uh, violate any laws. Um, charges for open meeting requests are not determined by the Board of Selectmen or any local government. They're determined by, in fact, the, the Secretary of State's office. So, so we only do what's listed as, as what happens there. Usually what happens when you, when you submit an open meeting request or open document request, whatever you want to call it, um, that'll go through the town administrator if he's the appropriate person. He'll see exactly what are you looking for. Um, a particular request came in that said we want every email for over a year that related to that had anything to do with Barn Hollow. So that requires a little bit to, to research and, and to get that information. And, and the group was advised it's going to cost you approximately this much money because what's the law? The law says you charge the hourly rate of the lowest paid employee who is qualified to do that research to get the information. If that happens to be legal records and we have to go to town clerk who charge or town council who charges about $130 an hour, we're not going to charge that. We're probably going to charge you the rate of the assistant town administrator, even though the town clerk has to do that. Um, so that's, that's set as far as what, what the rates are. Uh, currently, they say that it, it's 20 cents a page. Do I agree with that? No, that's, that's an archaic law, but that's what the law says. And um, the, the legislature is actually looking into that now because they realize that, that, that that's an issue. Uh, we usually give, if we can, if the town administrator can give you a document, if you say, um, I'd like to see last year's budget. So do you have an email address? I'll email it to you. It'll probably be there when you, when you get home. If you'd like it in writing and he doesn't have one there, then somebody's going to have to get that out of the computer, copy it. It'll, it'll be, you know, probably that 20 cents a page, or if we've got it around, he'll just give it to you. Complex issues require research, and, and in most cases, people are given a fairly accurate estimate of what that's gonna cost. And in this particular case, there was, an, there was a, a choice, do you want it electronically or in paper? Electronically, you're not paying for those costs of, of, of copying, it's, it's much cheaper. Uh, we were responded that they wanted it in paper. So, and, um, it wasn't the Board of Selectmen that said they couldn't pay for it. The town accountant would not allow um, for that expenditure to come out of a town budget. They said it wasn't appropriate, so it's got nothing to do with the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Shea, what do you use? Sorry, I didn't stand up. <laughs> so uh, I guess I would just preface it with, you know, I, I would look for more spirit of cooperation among everybody in town. I know volunteers that are on committees, uh, take time out of their work lives, they take time out of their family lives, they take time out of their private lives to, to give back to the community. So I would just hope that we could be in a situation where we don't need to get to the point where we need to have to even make a public records request and that spirit of cooperation exists before we get to that stage. And one thing that was touched on was um, email records and email searches, one thing that uh, I know the town is implementing a new website, and as part of that, it would be my hope that all boards, committee members could be assigned email addresses with at, at southborough.town.ma.us address to it, so that if 
that would simplify the process of tracking down emails and distributing them in those in those types of cases. It's all handled internally within the IT at the townhouse as opposed to individuals having to do research and dig into their own personal computer or work computer, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hasselberg again. Thank you for your question. Um, this goes to a main central point of transparency in government. If you have a board or committee who's charged with doing a specific action and they cannot even get documents to help them facilitate their job, we have a problem. Um, so I certainly uh, it, take pause at um, charging boards and committees for documents that aid them in doing their work. Um, now going on to the bigger issue about transparency. Both of my um, opponents have spoken about a new website being developed. It's not just about developing a website. It's making the website navigable and user friendly for everybody who's looking to use it. Um, that means implementation is critical. Right now we have a technology committee that has one resident on it nobody else. It has the town administrator and the town finance director, but because they are not residents and with a new bylaw we passed at town meeting, we ha do not have a quorum for this, this particular group. So I would urge anybody who has interest in the town's technology to please fill out an application and try to get on that, that committee. Um, because we're lacking in that area, the Board of Selectmen really has to take a proactive approach to make sure that the implementation of the new website includes forms, documentation, and all public records that originate electronically should be available through the website. At a click of the button, you should be able to go onto southrow.org, gov, whatever it is, and you should be able to easily search, just like we do on Google, to get all the information you need. This would promote transparency, promote the public having access to information, and in turn, make everybody feel like they're part of the community and part of a solution. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody else with a question? Okay. Mr. Phillips. Yeah. Oh, come on up. <clears throat> Phillips. Thanks. Uh, I have a question about our, our uh, the new uh, historic uh, the demolition delay bylaw that was uh, enacted at, at town meeting in April. Um, it seems to be commonly believed that this that this bylaw affects only uh, uh, take, takes effect only when uh, a, an owner applies for a demolition permit. Uh, however, this bylaw also contains a provision, a process where the historical commission and building inspector, if they decide that a significant building in town is being neglected, they can order the owner to make repairs to that property. Uh, and if, if, if the owner uh, can't, uh, doesn't do it, they can seek a court order or a lien on the property. Um, and uh, they, they, the, the building inspector is allowed to consider financial hardship, but is not required to. Um, and uh, it's a very expansive definition of neglect, so it seems like uh, this, this bylaw, we're relying a lot on the kindness of the, the, uh, the historical commission and building inspector, and, and if this bylaw were abused, it could have very onerous consequences to owners of antique properties. So my questions are, do you, uh, to, to the, all three candidates, do you feel, first of all, that the town has a responsibility to formally notify homeowners of affected properties that they now have a new maintenance requirement for their properties and that there are potentially significant consequences if if they do not uh, uh, if, if properties aren't maintained to these standards and second uh, more broadly to what extent do you believe that historic preservation goals justify intrusion on private property rights of, of homeowners in South Borough thank you okay yeah mr. Shea yeah. Thank you, Steve. Um, so the, I attended the March 31st meeting that the Historical Commission had, was, you know, a few weeks before town meeting. And at that meeting, through the course of discussion, I uh, made the observation to them that 
in advancing the demolition delay bylaw, the one thing that they had not done, yes, they had held you know, a number of public meetings and they had uh, posted their agendas and discussed uh, the bylaw at those meetings, but what they hadn't done is taken the time at a meeting like this, you know, publicized through the library and the services that they offer, to hold public information hearings to be able to solicit greater input on that demolition delay. And I really thought that they were moving too quickly and that they ought to take a step back, take the time to get the public input so that some of these issues and questions could be answered, could be addressed. Um, I made that same statement on the town meeting floor as well. And I was the only one on the advisory committee that actually spoke in favor of postponing uh, the demolition delay bylaw for a year. But I think that's I think that's a very important thing. And I also think it's evidenced by the recent <coughs> agenda that the Historical Commission posted online. Um, I think it's a meeting that they're having this week. One of the agenda items was demolition delay publicity or words to that effect. And it, as I read that, I'm saying to myself, well, that's, that's backwards. What they should have done was taken the time to have public hearings to inform people to get the input on it before people enacted it, before it was voted on. And now, after it's been voted into place, they're looking to hold or strategize on how to get information out about um, the bylaw. Uh, I think it was the wrong way to do it. I think that I'm, I'm in favor of the concept, and I think that we could have worked towards uh, developing a bylaw that could have been uh, more readily passed without the number of amendments that we did have at town meeting on it. And I wish they had taken the opportunity to, to hold off for one year. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. I, I talked with Mr. Phillips last night at the Historical Commission meeting um, where the Historical Commission is taking an active role at this point to notify all um, homeowners on the suggested list of properties that are 19, 25, and, and, and um, older um, that may be affected by this new bylaw. I will say that at town meeting, I thought that there was uh, there was an hour and a half discussion regarding this particular um, warrant article, much more than any of the others that were that were um, being considered that evening. But I'm going to speak just to your question about the neglect piece. I did vote in favor of this bylaw. I also voted in favor of the three. Um, substantive amendments that were made both by Mrs. Faniff and Mr. Boland. Mr. Boland's amendment um, was to strike out the neglect piece. I did vote in favor of that. Um, I was one of maybe five in the back row that did and very few people in the front. Um, so I, I felt that it didn't substantially change the bylaw itself and what it, the bylaw strives to do, the intent of the bylaw. What I will say is I have read the bylaw again um, after our discussions last night, Mr. Phillips, and I still maintain based on my reading and my interpretation of the bylaw that the demolition by neglect is triggered when a permit is taken out. Now, a demolition permit is taken out if you read all of the definitions. Additionally, um, when you read the definition for demolition by neglect, you'll find that it is an unoccupied building. Um, so that is something I important to note. Um, you know, I share many people's concerns. I went, I've been to four or five meetings prior to town meeting regarding this. I felt that I was knowledgeable enough to, to vote in favor of it. Um, and I stand by my vote on that, but I certainly think that there needs to be more public outreach now that the bylaw is in place. And I look forward to working with the commission, who is appointed by the Board of Selectmen, to make sure those things happen. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ball. So I, I think as you heard, and if you were town meeting, you know, I, I, I moved to strike the part about the uh, demolition by neglect. I spoke at their meeting and, and thought they were online with, with going ahead and at one point they said they were going to withdraw that part from from the article um, so that's why I voted against it because I could not not support that because knowing the town I know of several properties that um, they could go in as soon as this bylaw is in effect and say 
you're allowing your house to deteriorate because it's unoccupied and, and we're not happy with this and you've got to do something to fix it up and it's not being fixed up and it's not being lived in because those um, people can't afford to do it. Um, people have old barns. Uh, if you look at the list, there are chicken coops listed on, on this list. So I, I, I believe in trying to, trying to preserve uh, our heritage and our town. It's a little difficult uh, sometimes telling people what they can do. And if you follow the news lately, we have a big stone building down the street that we're trying to work with the owner to, uh, to preserve that. Um, there's a building in Northborough called the White Cliffs um, where there was a, a, a good rational decision last night as opposed to uh, jamming a historical district down the owner's throat, preventing him from, from doing anything to it. Uh, they agreed to, to talk for another year and see what can be done. But important to note, you know, that person's been trying to sell his, his property for over a year. Uh, I spoke with a resident in town whose, whose house comes under this bylaw, who's tried to market his house for over a year. And it's being marketed through antique magazines from Sotheby's and, and other things. So uh, what he's finding out is uh, the time has passed when a lot of people want to go get that old home that had a $13,000 heating bill last year. And, and they want new Viking Thermador and, and sound wind doesn't come through it. So it, it's going to be difficult. There are going to be some issues. I expect some will come up in the next uh, year or so. but. Um, I'm confident in the building inspector who, who this mostly lies on the neglect part that he's a he's a great guy and he's a rational thinker and I think he's going to work with those people and we're not we're not going to see the problems I think under the uh, demolition by neglect that, that that I worry about and if we do let's go back to town meeting and repeal it. Okay, Dr. Faison, we'll we have time for a couple more questions and then we'll go to the closing statements. Well, last year at this time. We met and there was a great deal of discussion about transportation and that was focused on Main Street. And I, I think actually if you look at the map, we, we have more transportation problems than Main Street. We're split in half by Route 9. Uh, we have a public, uh, we, have, we have a commuter rail in town, but you can't walk there. You really can't bike there safely. Uh, and it, it just seems like transportation is a much larger issue than just Main Street, and although well, that's large too, but there's a larger issue. Also, our planning board, uh, our planning uh, plan, our, our long-range plan does call for what's called complete streets in Southboro, that you can walk, you can walk with your dog safely, uh, which a lot of streets we can't. Uh, so that concept of complete streets and concept of better transportation between the north and the south and getting to commuter rail, how can we solve those transportation problems? For all three of you to address. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm from Cordeville, Dr. Faison. So I, um, I, I see the the commuters walking home on that last train at 8:30 at night, sometimes in the dark, and I and I cringe for their safety. <laughs> so I certainly um, see a. a a much more comprehensive plan that needs to take place in order to um, address the transportation issues, the sidewalk issues. Um, but this again goes into a larger issue that this community has in that we lack a vision. We lack a community vision where each department um, has a long range operational and capital plan to address these issues. You know, we have binders of, of studies that are sitting on a desk on a shelf somewhere in the town administrator's office. I was there a couple of weeks ago speaking with the town administrator on issues, and he showed me all of these, these binders of plans and studies and surveys that we have spent thousands of dollars on. And where, where are they? They're sitting there. Nothing is happening. We need somebody that's gonna take a fresh look have a fresh perspective on our community and start making some bold decisions in order to move the community forward and doing it in a comprehensive way that provides our community some vision and provides our citizens the services that they demand and they deserve for their tax money. Okay. Thank you. Um, so thank you for your question. I guess I would almost put that in the same category as the one that Mr. Wilson started with this evening. 
like if, if money were not were not an issue because obviously there's a large capital cost that goes along with those uh, roadway improvements uh, complete streets type projects um, I mean, I think that's evidenced by Main Street itself. I mean, that has been around over eight years, 10 years or so. Uh, one of the committees that I am actively involved with, and I thought we did a great job last year, was advancing Main Street from the uh, design plans at the, at the stage that they were just a year ago to where they are now. I think we've got a lot more um, buy-in and support uh, across the town from that. Um, you know, and complete streets is it's a great idea. It's, it would be great as someone who likes to ride his bike around town. And you know, there's some streets that I know that I need to avoid. Um, but there's also a lot of streets <clears throat> that people appreciate the rural character of them. They appreciate all the trees that we have, the large diameter trees, the age of the trees. And with you know, bike lanes, sidewalks, complete streets, comes tree removal, comes land takings, and comes other issues that all need to be factored into it as well. So it's, you know, I think that there's a, there's a plan that we need to, to implement for this, but I think we need to be realistic about it as well uh, and take all those factors into consideration. Thank you, Mr. Bowen. So, so I, I agree, and, and part of the Main Street design was, um, you know, looking at the continuing changing um, focus of, of DOT um, as far as what they're looking for for, for streets. And, and a, an issue with Main Street, if, if Main Street was going to be built completely the way that um, Mass DOT would like, we'd have to make it much wider. There'd be dedicated bike lanes and, and other things. But, but part of what we did want to make sure we included was um, sidewalks on each side. And um, we were able to get the permission to paint share the lane um, markings on, on that road, which is very important because we have a lot of bikers. But Brian, it, Brian knows what he's talking about on this because he's, he's a, a very successful engineer and he does a lot of this stuff for a living and he, he's right. I served on the master plan, plan committee. Um, it's out there. You know, there were a lot of um, uh, suggestions for it to, to move forward in zoning. zoning. I served on the zoning advisory committee for what seemed like 22 years. We finally finished, but some of the frustrating thing is you just can't get complete buy-in. So um, it might have been a little overreaching trying to completely redo the whole zoning code as opposed to, to trying to you know pick a few things to go forward with it. We did it. A, a couple things have been done, but again, part of the problem is this planning board talks about it. There's, there's a lot of pushback, and my favorite thing when we talk about things like transparency is you know we're we're getting ready to go through on some of these things after three years of very public open meetings and people how did how come we didn't know this was going on um, so citizens have to get involved and look at it um, we're looking to get uh, you know sidewalks wherever we can in town it's going to be difficult to get anything over the causeways because um, you know the state doesn't want to uh, widen anything there but but DPW is looking at sidewalks on on Marlboro Road, on Framingham Road, on some of the other you know busy streets that you know normally you wouldn't ride your bicycle on a sidewalk, but that might be an appropriate place to do it on some of those streets. So we need to continue trying to work on that. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go to uh, final statements, and we'll start with Mr. Shea. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Again, thank you all for for coming here tonight. Um, I'm sure everybody has seen the uh, signs that have popped up around town, and I'd like to thank Desiree for adopting the color scheme of the signs tonight in her wardrobe. <laughs> that was uh, very nice of her to do. Um, so, I, you know, I guess one of the questions that I've been asked a number of times is why, why are you running for selectman? And I know when I was at the transfer station this past week, I think the best comment that I got from all the people <laughs> that I saw, the hands that I shook, was well, someone came up to me and said, you know, I, th I thought you did a really good job at town meeting. So, and I took that as a, as a good compliment. I was, I was the only one to make a comment like that. And I thought that went a long way to speak towards the type of person that I am. I'm someone that is willing to take the time, learn about the issues, think through them, and then not be afraid to offer an opinion and stand up for what you believe in after. Um, Thank you all for coming. I hope I have your support on May 11th.
Thank you. Thank you. I thought you did a good job at town meeting too, but I'm not voting for it. <laughs> um, first thing I'll just touch on, somebody mentioned uh, everyone should have a town email address. I can't disagree with that more. Uh, we have a, had a situation years ago when, when I was first elected with a, with a town official who got in a couple of problems, and I would hate to see that he was doing some of that stuff under his, his town email address, which now brings the town in liability for, for, for all of that. Um, you want to look at my emails? Ask me. I'm not going to charge you to do them. I'll give you. I'll give you whatever you want. You know, because because I've got them. Uh, you know, it seems as and this is the latest buzzword: transparency. Um, I, I don't see it as much. Our meetings are posted. Occasionally, we have to uh, make an adjustment within the 48 hours as some new information comes out. Our agenda packet is posted online when our meetings are posted. Our meetings are televised live by. Some of our South Borough Access Media people, which is, which is great, you can then watch it uh, almost any day. You can watch it um, online, on demand, whatever else. So I, I think we do for for a small town with a lot of committees, elected officials. I think we do a very good job of keeping our public informed. But the public has to want to be informed. One of the great things about this new website, which is coming up and, and is one of the more popular ones around for town government is you will be able to submit your email address and receive information via email on meetings that are coming up and specific things. So it'll be, it'll be much easier for the people in the email world to, to get that information as opposed to constantly saying, I, I wonder what this board meeting meeting tonight. So that's one thing we're, we're excited about. Again, departments have to push their information on there and there's some information that um, you can't get on there. But uh, I think we're going in the right direction. I think we've made some, some great strides in the last uh, five years, six years, more. Um, we have a new board with five members on it. I think we're doing a great job. We're finding our way a little as opposed to with three boards, but I think the town's in, in pretty good shape. We're moving forward. And again, I'd stress you know, how we feel about you. The board is like $2 million under our levy capacity. There's not a lot of other towns out there like that in Massachusetts. Thanks, hope you consider me. Before my close, I want to thank the library trustees for giving me a nice blue and white name <laughs> tag, so it does go with my outfit. Anyway, um, thank you again to the library trustees for hosting Candidates Night. It's always excellent every year. I've attended them since they started doing that. I hope all of you, the voters, have had a chance to get a sense of who I am and what I stand for. For more information about me, please visit my website at electdesiree.com or give me a call. My number is in the book. If they still have books, you can find it there. Um, my goals as, the member, as a member of the Board of Selectmen will be to bring transparency, accountability, and trust back to the townhouse, to create an environment where information is readily available, to provide residents and taxpayers with an open government that re uh, respects opinions, differing opinions, and compromise solutions. To work collaboratively with my colleagues and all department heads, and most importantly, to lead the town in creating a comprehensive vision for our short and long-term future needs. As the former chairperson of the Regional School Committee at the time of the Algonquin expansion, I'm accustomed with large financial challenges and having to come back to the voters a couple of times around to get things passed. You don't stop educating the public. You don't stop the dialogue. You don't stop the communication. Instead, you continue and you get the job done for forward progress. You don't let those binders sit there on the shelf. You take them out and you start using them and you start getting some stuff done. Um, I'm confident my effectiveness as a leader, then for as chairman of the Algonquin School Committee, will transfer to my ability to lead this town now. Additionally, my experience as an educational policy advisor in the State Senate and my track record as a successful small business owner combined with a law degree will greatly enhance my ability to be an effective member of the Board of Selectmen. Um, if you want more of the same, my two, my two opponents clearly fit the bill. If you want someone who is bold, honest, 
and is willing to be unafraid and stand up for what's right in our community, then I'm your gal. I ask for your vote on Monday, May 11th. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, that concludes the debate. We thank you all for being here tonight. I don't know if there's anyone from the library that wanted to say something. Jay Nelson. Okay. And don't forget to go and vote May 11th. Okay? Thank you. Monday, May 11th. Remember, town elections are on a Monday.